You're killing me, Smalls. Great, I've said to one occasion, even about myself, if I were starting off today, I would love to be a well-educated black because I really believe they do have an actual advantage no today. Politics. You've said that you could do a better job at negotiating an arms control agreement with the Soviets than some of these professionals who've been trying to do it for years. I didn't say me, Mike. I said somebody has to do it. If it were me, that'd be fine. I could do it. You somebody has to help this country. And if they don't, the country and the world are in big trouble. Because within a short period of time, as sure as we're sitting here, there's not going to be a country and there's not going to be a world. me is why am I okay there we go why are supporting you? Donald Trump yes uh, I can't speak for Donald Trump and I can't answer for all of the vernacular that he's tended to use other than he is obviously not a trained politician clearly and I think in the very beginning his flaws uh, of using some of the wording that he chose to use um, obviously I believe if he could go backwards he would change up some of the wording right but I think it is that flaw and that rawness that is also what captured the hearts of millions of voters across this country what will Donald Trump do to not only make sure that police officers and law and order stay safe, but also the hundreds of thousands of African Americans around the country today who don't feel that they're safe, who don't feel that they're protected. Donald Trump has declared over and over again, we need to we need to go back to training to the police department. Okay. Why in the world are police are aiming immediately to shoot the kill? Exactly. He said it is a disgrace. He said you should be aiming for, if you're going to immobilize somebody, do that first. Mm -hmm. Unless they are directly about to kill you. Right now, cops are trained that if they even hear the sound of gun, it's automatically just start shooting. There's a problem lies in the cadets and in the training policy in the police academies, and we have to directly go to the source and rediscover why cops are killing so many people. It is without question that we as African Americans uh, in this country, uh, in many cases, have received a bad hand when it comes to police brutality. But at the same time, Donald Trump has declared he's the law and order candidate. He's got to bridge the gap, and he's doing that, one, by communicating with the communities, mm -hmm. showing the sensitivity, which is one of the things what I'm speaking on, right. showing the sensitivities of the African American communities that have been affected by the law enforcement, at the same time making sure that the law enforcement is not being ostracized and also penalized and found guilty before evidence is even declared. If in an interview with CBS News, President Trump said more white people are killed as an answer to why black people are still being killed by police officers. But by population percentages, black people are about three times more likely than white people to die in a police encounter. If the president won't even acknowledge that, how can he fix the problem? The president has routinely acknowledged and expressed the absolute um, atrocity of the case of George Floyd, uh, and his heart goes out to that family still. Um, he was noting a, a fact um, that there were a when you look at unarmed killings with police interactions in this country, that you had nine unarmed black individuals who were fatally shot in 19
19 unarmed white individuals. That's down from 38 and 32 respectively in 2015. So the numbers have actually come down uh, since the Obama administration who is making that point. But one point he wants to strongly make is this, uh, that black men and women who die of homicide, they are likely to die of homicide at eight times greater uh, than that of white individuals and Hispanics combined. Uh, that, that's the rate combined. So that's an extraordinary thing that we want to look at. I've listed for you the names of these kids who have died across this country. It is unacceptable. And under this president, he'll take action. And the derelict mayor of Chicago should step up and ask for federal help because she's doing a very poor job at securing this. Follow up to the Regis question. I guess I didn't follow the data that you were just referring to. Are you saying that the president did have data to back up his claim that more white people are killed by police officers than black people? Yeah, I've already read out that data to you. I don't think yes. we followed it. I've it already read out that data to you, and you can go fact check on Your the uncle fought real racism uh, at home, uh, certainly, and throughout uh, much of this country, and made real change. What is it when everything is racist, when that is the, the word now that everybody paints everything with that they don't like, does nothing become racist, racist? Does it in some way sort of cheapen what your uncle fought so much to defend against and to stop? Well, I believe Rachel just put it best. And by the way, good morning, good everyone. Good morning. Fox and Friends, thank you for being on it with real news and not fake news. <laughs> so to answer your question, absolutely. Racism is just a word that's being bandied and thrown about and thrown at the president, in my opinion, unjustly. President Trump is not a racist. I've been with the president recently uh, quite a bit. And when he signed the legislation making the historic site, Martin Luther King site in Atlanta, Georgia, a national park, it was introduced by uh, Congressman John Lewis, and that, it, believe it or not, that's one thing the two of them did together. It took two to do it, and I'm so glad the president has done it. But what is so outrageous to call a man a racist who continues to acknowledge the significant work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., my uncle, in a positive way, mm -hmm. and he puts his money where his mouth is. He puts his energy behind it. And in making America great again, you know, perhaps saying that in Haiti and in Africa, the, you know, Africa is a huge continent with many nations. There was no offense to the people, a lot of dignity to the people, but the hell holes in that some of their own leaders in Africa and Haiti have, have taken advantage of them and the area and done a disservice to the people. So, and, and, and again, Rachel, yes, to have a strong America, a compassionate America who can really help nations like Haiti and all the African nations. African people are brilliant. Haitian people are brilliant, productive, and wonderful, and they deserve better. And I believe that President Trump not only understands that, but is making America great again so we can be a big help to clean up some of the hell holes across the world and in our own nation. He's doing a great job with prison reform and helping those prisoners come back to society to lead productive lives. Mm -hmm. He said to people on Medicaid, okay, you need assistance, that's a good thing, but you need to work as well. Have the dignity of a job. I Absolutely. like all of those things. The little babies in the womb. I could go mm -hmm. on and on I about do. all the good things he's doing. <laughs> Sometimes you got to ask one question and get one great answer, and that's where we have to leave it. Alvita King, thank you very much for what you do and for your insight this morning. We appreciate it. been communicating that to the community. He's been speaking. It's not like we don't see Trump on the air every minute of every single day. Then why is he at 0% support from African Americans in Cleveland? Then why is he at 2% support of African Americans in Pennsylvania? Anytime he says something that is remotely painted to be, could be uh, interpreted as a racial, racial comment, it is blasted all over the media because of the narrative that's being portrayed. Why in the world, as me as a black man from the South, I know what real racism is. I know what real division is. I'm married to a white woman named Tamara Burns. I got six beautiful brown mixed babies. I, I'm born, bred in the deep south. The Confederate flag just a couple of days ago was raised up in the state of South Carolina as a reminder of the one year of its removal that we had to fight for years to pull down. I know what real racism is and it's not Donald Trump. That's not a speech, that's reality.
get tired of seeing what's happening with this country. And if it got so bad, I would never want to rule it out totally because I really am tired of seeing what's happening with this country, how we're, how we're really making other people live like kings and we're not. Man, I do a lot of business with the Japanese and they smile about it too. They know it. The country is losing billions and billions of dollars to Japan and we can't afford to lose. And it's a shame. It's but a so shame now, are you, are you saying this by way of indicating that you could do it better and you do intend to run for president at some no, point? No, I'm not going to run for president, but I, I think somebody... Now, in, in eight years, if you came back, would you have a different answer? In four years, I tend to back. doubt it. I really tend really? to doubt it. But I, I just think that there are so many ways that this country can straighten itself out and we're not going about those ways. Cutting yeah. farm aid is not the appropriate thing. Cutting help for the homeless and help for the poor yeah. and welfare... Certain things can be done that really a well educated big black to this country has and a those things tremendous are not advantage done. over a well educated white in terms of the job market. And I think sometimes a black may think that they don't really have the advantage or this or that, but in actuality, today, currently, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great. I've said on occasion, even about myself, if I were starting off today, I would love to be a well-educated black because I really believe they do have an actual advantage today. Trump is not a racist. He claims to be a Christian. A Christian does not harbor any hate. Someone who truly has the Holy Spirit within them does not see color for in God's eyes, we are all created equal. If Trump was a racist, he would not want to help the poor, the less fortunate, the veterans, or any other heritage. Trump is not a racist.